how do I create a content marketing plan that serves my audience and serves my business and helps me sell products and services and make money online. I recently asked my audience what they wanted to hear from me in the next month of December 2020 into quarter one of 2021. And this was by far the most requested video. And because it is still December of 2020 and a lot of people are still planning for quarter one, I thought I would go ahead and release this video in December so you can use it to plan January, February, March. So you're gonna see me in this video planning for December, January, February, but you may very well use this video to plan quarter one of 2021. So since this was one of my most requested videos from my audience, I thought I would just give it to you and show you my exact planning process and what I'm actually doing currently to plan next year's content. If you are new here, hi, hello, my name is Heather Ferris. I run a Pinterest marketing agency and this YouTube channel slash education company where we teach you how to use Pinterest to make more money, get more sales, uh, get more email list subscribers, you know, pretty much the whole shebang. Um, we have helped hundreds of clients over four years do the exact same thing uh, as well as students. And I'm here to be your guide if that is what you want in 2021. So welcome. If you're not new here, Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much. Either way, make sure you hit the subscribe button and join our crew. Now, why don't we just dive right into today's topic because this video could be a little long. I'm gonna apologize now. First things first, when you're planning your content, I want you to mark off all of the days in the coming quarter that you are going to be off and I also want you to mark off launch dates. If you're launching products or services or whatever, like mark off your launch dates. Now, I'm not typically a open closed cart kind of launcher. Actually don't really do many launches. Most of my products are all evergreen. I do have a wait list for services. That's typically like my waiting kind of period, but I'm not launching anything new in quarter one. So for me, this is actually very simple and streamlined. It's a continuation of what's already working. So for you though, you may be launching a, a course or a product or a service, things like that. So I want you to make sure you mark those in your calendar. And then I also want you to mark off your time off because you can't create content if you're off and you also want to make sure that you're honoring those boundaries in your business. So mark off your dates for launching, mark off your goals, which is what I'm going into next and mark off your time, your time off. Now goals for me for quarter one are to get, are going to be to finish getting a thousand subscribers on this YouTube channel and to hit my 4,000 watch hours goal so I can monetize this channel. That has been something I've been working on since the spring of last year. So I really would like to finish doing that within quarter one because that will allow me one year of building this channel and then ultimately getting it monetized with AdSense. So that's one of my goals. Now, another one of my goals for my content is to actually um, book more calls from YouTube. This is actually a great revenue generator outside of AdSense. I sell products and I book calls and do one-on-one -on -one services with this channel, through this channel. So I wanna to continue to sell my products and to book calls. So those are also goals of mine. So I wanna keep those in mind as we're going through this content planning process. Now that you have kind of all of that in mind, we're gonna kinda of get into the nitty gritty. Now, before we do that, I want to address something. If you're launching, you're going to need to go find another video around actually how to plan runway launch content. Since I don't launch, I'm not an expert at launching. I don't know what this process looks like. I have worked on launches behind the scenes before, and I know that to do a real launch, to do a traditional like open close cart launch and to runway that sucker. Uh, I've been actually involved in multiple six figure launches before with clients. And it's a lot of work and there's a lot of content planning that goes into that. So you're going to need to find someone else for that. So if you're not launching, I'm your girl. Stick around because that is what this video is all about. If you're not 
launching. I'm going to teach you how to create your content calendar for the next 90 days. Now, what I want you to do from the outset, before you look at analytics, before you do anything else, I want you to ask your audience what they want from you. Even if your audience is tiny, 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 I have an email list of 1000 people, 1000. I have maybe 700 subscribers on Instagram and I have like less than a thousand subscribers on here, but I still ask you guys what you want and you still tell me what you want. Like even having a tiny audience, I still get great feedback and you guys are really helping me to craft my content here on YouTube as this channel grows. Um, and then YouTube also seeps into every other channel that I create content for. Today's video was really just pillar content. So I'm gonna teach you how to plan that pillar content and then you can take that and we can do a repurpose video later of how to repurpose and have like an omni presence around all the places, okay? So ask your audience what they want. I did this last week and that's where this video idea came from. So that's the first thing you're gonna do. While you're, audi like, while you're gathering those responses, because that could take a little bit, I want you to start looking at your analytics. Now, figure out what your main traffic driver is. Now, for a lot of people in my audience, their main traffic driver is gonna be either Google or Pinterest. In most cases, probably Pinterest. So I want you to find your main traffic driver and you need to look at those analytics first. You wanna feed the beast, feed the thing that's giving you the most traffic first, and then we're gonna bring in the other channels behind it. For me, YouTube is my biggest traffic driver because it is the platform that I show up on the most often and consistently. Because YouTube is my main platform, I'm looking at YouTube analytics. Now, you may have a really engaged email list, but not a very engaged blog or social media channel. So you may wanna look at your email service provider or social media channels or Pinterest or Google analytics. Like where, is the bulk of your traffic coming from and then you need to go find that analytic source and look there. Once you kind of know what your most popular content has been, I want you to think about how those fit into your current pillars and then you're gonna kind of write a question down on a piece of paper or something like, how can I make this content better or how can I cover this content again but in a different way? I want you to think as we're planning this content, as we're planning your pillars, I want you to think about a library and how when you walk into a library and you're looking for like cast iron cooking cookbooks, you're gonna find a cookbook on that topic across many different authors, across many different methods, and that's kind of the library way, right? That is a library of information. I want you to think about your channels, your content publishing as a library. We have our pillar piece of content, which is like the beast of the content. It covers all the sides, all the things, all the questions. And then we have this library bookshelf of content on the same topic. So how can you talk about this piece of content in a different way, in a new way, and also bring value and bring a new perspective? I want you to think about that as we're planning our pillars. And as when we jump into the computer and I show you my click up, you'll see the same thing. Okay, so we're brainstorming our pillars. We are thinking about our content from the library kind of thought process. Now you can do this if you're creating shop products too. Um, one thing that I think of when I'm creating content plan for clients or they're asking me like what other products could we create or promote, think about what other products would complement your main product. If you have a line of, uh, you know, lunch boxes. I have a client that sells backpacks and lunch boxes. One of the most popular add to like add-ons for that shop could be patches that they could stick on like Velcro patches. They could stick on the lunch boxes and backpacks. I made that suggestion. Hundreds of other people were asking for the same thing, their customers. So they made that product. Now that's a complimentary product. So think about that if you're an e-com shop owner and you're watching this video as well, like what other things could you create? We're kind of brainstorming our content. We're looking at our analytics to find out what's popular. We're thinking about the library method. Now I want you to think about your pillars and I want you to write them down. If you haven't done this before, this is new to you. Um, kind of content pillars are like the main 
buckets of content that you create. So my pillars or buckets of content are Pinterest marketing, e-commerce, um, ads, automation, tools, uh, and tech. Just like six different buckets of content that all of my content kind of falls inside of. And then as you're thinking about the library, right, there's a lot of moving pieces here. There's no one way or linear way to do this. But as you're thinking about the brand or the uh, content pillars and the library kind of approach to what worked last year, um, you're gonna continue kind of brainstorming on paper with this method. So I'm gonna show you how I do it in ClickUp. Now, I always start off by doing this on paper. These are content ideas that I want to create videos for, and then those videos I'm gonna turn into shorter videos to promote on other channels, right? So I always start on paper. It helps me to think through what that's gonna be, and then once I have it on paper and have an idea, then I can put it in ClickUp and I can kind of take it further. Once you start brainstorming, the brainstorming process of this, you've seen the content that worked really well for you before, I want you to flip it on the other side of that coin and look at the content that fell flat. And I want you to ask yourself, how can you reapproach that content and do it better so it will work better next time? Just because something didn't work the first time doesn't mean it can't work again. Uh, I have a lot of videos on my channel that didn't do very well the first time around that I'm rethinking about them and how I can approach them again in a better way to bring new life to them. So you can also think about that as you're looking at your analytics. What didn't work and how can I do it better? So we've kind of talked about this whole brainstorming process and how we're going to approach this. Now you're going to actually start dropping content into ClickUp. For this, I actually want to show you inside the computer what this looks like, but there's another point I wanna make before we jump in the computer so you know what I'm talking about. So this next point I wanna make, and then we're gonna hop into the computer, is um, your buyer journey. So every piece of content you create should serve your business and it should serve your audience at the same time. What do I mean by that? Um, you hear me say this a lot. You don't want to create content just to create content and you don't create pins just to create pins. The same thing goes with your content planning. What is the ultimate goal of this piece of content and how is it going to serve my business and my audience at the same time? Now, every piece of content I create serves my audience first and it serves my business second. So I want to make sure that every piece of content that I create is a t good top of funnel feeder and it's ultimately bringing people into my world deeper. So it may be reaching new cold audiences that have never seen me before and it may be reaching a warm audience that has seen me regularly. At the same time though, it's answering questions for people who have seen me before and people who have not seen me before. And I'm calling them to action at the end and I'm giving them value and I'm giving them transformation and then I'm bringing them in closer, deeper down the funnel. So I think about the offers that I have in my business and how they are gonna help that person take the next step and how it relates to my content. Now. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the computer and I'm actually gonna show you my, the like, I've already done all the planning on paper, but I'm gonna show you the ClickUp part of this process and kind of how that works and how I actually plug the content into the calendar. So why don't we dive into that? Okay, so we are inside of my ClickUp and this is really probably overwhelming for some people, but this is what my assistant and I work out of for all of my pillar content. Um, the pillar content is like the main pieces of content in my business and it doesn't really matter where they're published, it's just like the pillar, right? So inside, let's look at this from board view first because it will probably make a little bit more sense. Inside of my ClickUp, I create, I have a list for like ideas. So this is anytime I have a new idea for content or someone says, hey, it'd be really cool if you made this video, I add that in here. And then as I'm researching video ideas, like things I'm seriously interested in creating, creating I move them over here. From here, these lists are gonna change in, like their names are gonna change over time. But currently I'm planning for February, January, and December. 
And then as those pieces of content are created, I move them to editing and scheduled. And these two lists are for my assistant. Um, once I have actually created the content, it moves into her editing list with a due date and then I'm done with it, right? Until it goes live and it, I need to start promoting it. So this is kind of list view or board view, kind of what that plan looks like. Now we go into list view and this is actually how I do the bulk of my planning. So I have my ideas, my researching list of content. Like this is content I'm seriously interested in creating. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my December list because December is already all planned out. Now you'll see there's a couple lists in here with like different um, colors and flags. The colors really don't make a difference. You can make whatever color you want, but essentially this is a custom little um, thing, column in ClickUp that you can then create whatever it is. So for me, I have all my pillars. So these are the different pillars of content I create in my business. And then I have a competition um, column in here. And as I do my research, I plug in like, when did this piece of content get created last by my competition? Um, and then the video day, it just tells you what video day it, this is gonna be assigned to. So I publish two times a week. So I have a Thursday and a Monday. This just tells me and my assistant like what, where this goes. And then what offer am I going to promote inside of this video? What am I gonna talk about? How am I gonna pull people deeper into that funnel? Because this is all top of funnel. I wanna move them one step lower, one step lower. I wanna get them down to being a customer, right? So that's the whole purpose of this. So those are these little things. Now uh, you can do that obviously by just clicking this plus sign here. Um, obviously the due date and I don't, we don't do a whole lot with the assignee. I mean, you can, um, I just know if it's, if it's not in editing, it's obviously mine to do. So let's actually plan January together. So you can see how I do this. Now the brain dumping and the analytics reading, like if I included that in this video, it would take forever. This video would be like an hour long. We don't want that. We, we I wanna respect your time. So you need to make sure you're doing all the brainstorming and reading of the analytics to figure out what content you possibly wanna create next to get that in here to be to this point. So I'm gonna show you from this point on and you will need to do from you know the pre-work up to this. So. I already have one Monday video in place and the last time I'm publishing a Monday video is the 28th of December. So I need to look at the calendar and see, okay, I've got a December 31st, so I need another Thursday video. So this will be December or January 4th. So I need a Thursday video to, to move up to that list for the last Thursday in December. So probably this Tailwind Create would be a good one. This is gonna be a tech, it could technically be a design. And my offer, I don't know, could be my Pinterest course. So I'm gonna move this guy to January. You can see it moves up there and I wanna adjust it in the list a little bit and add the due date of December 31st. Okay. And now I'm gonna go ahead and see what I need to do next. So let's look at our calendar again. And I have one, two, three, one, two, three. So I need six videos to move to the January list, three Mondays, three Thursdays. So I'm gonna click this button and I'm just gonna roughly think about, okay, e-com, I need a marketing video. So the repurpose video might be a really good one. Uh, marketing Thursday. Um, a tech, pretty much all my tech videos are Thursdays. This one might be a good one. Optimized Pinterest account. So that's two Thursdays, one Monday. Let me see all three Thursdays. And then let's move these to January and we'll we will reassess what we have in place. Okay, so we have our call to action that we need to fill, our offer. 
So Pinterest versus Facebook ads are probably gonna be book a call, or I could also do my Pinterest ads checklist. I have a couple different things for each call to action I technically could use. So um, Pinterest audiences for e-commerce, um, probably my strategy guide would be the most relevant strategy got on this one e-commerce mistakes and you don't have to know this right off the bat like this could change later this is definitely going to be my pinterest course this is going to be templates and then maybe this is going to be i don't know what that one's going to be just yet okay so that's fine so we see that we have a few Monday and Thursdays. We need to kind of move these around a little bit now. So I'm gonna like every other this guy. So I've got Thursday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, yay. So what I wanna do now is actually go in and assign. So this is December 31st, so this would be the 7th. This is the Monday video. Okay, I got all of my dates assigned and I'm, I have one more Thursday that I need to cover. I need to cover the 28th in January. So we need to move up one more Thursday video. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this one up. And it needs to go to the bottom of the list and then January 28th okay so we have all of our content now kind of planned out for December and then we have content now planned out for January since I've done the pre-work on this already and I already know the pillars of content, I already know the pain points my audience has and what content they wanna see. It's easier for me to, to then just go in and kind of plug these in because this calendar is ever changing. This is not set in stone. These could very well move and shift and I may add other ideas in, like they may become more of a priority during these weeks, therefore moving some of these ideas down back to the researching list. Now, um, when you look at this, you can actually look at this in calendar mode and you can go in and kind of see, okay, I've got a video now planned for every Thursday in December and every Monday. And I also have a video for every Monday and Thursday in January. So we have 60 days of content planned now. And now all we actually have to do from here is move into the outlining research phase. And when you're doing your research, you're doing keyword research, you're doing trend research to find out like when this is popular, which you probably should do that. I should, probably should have mentioned that earlier. Um, but nonetheless, figuring out when you need to publish it and publishing it in advance. Um, and then really just kind of digging into outlining and creating content. So this is my system. This is what I do. I really hope this helps. Let me know if you have questions. You can see how this process can be tweaked and used in many different businesses um, for many different brains. Like this is kind of a overarching, like big picture view of planning content. And then there's a lot of like nitty gritty little details in there too, like the click up process that we talked about. Um, but a lot of it is like big thinking questions, looking at your analytics and looking at your content pillars and thinking about like what other little pieces of the puzzle can I create to make this a full picture. The goal of content is to, to paint a full picture that way when you are actually done creating the content and you're marketing it, it does, it does the job for you without you having to constantly be creating new content. I never want you to create content just to create content. I never want you to create content one time and never touch it again. That's not the purpose of content creation. It's not the purpose of content planning because a lot of us, we put our heart and souls into creating content. Creating one video for me, for this channel, 
takes upwards of four hours. And that's not even like including editing. You know, I have an editor that I pay to actually edit these videos. That's not including her time either. Um, but brainstorming the content ideas, you know, what, how does this fit into the puzzle? What offers am I gonna pitch? And then actually doing all of the research and the content creation and then the upload time, all of, there's so much going into content. That's why I never want you to create content just to create content because it takes a lot of your time you should be getting paid for your time. So I just wanna like encourage you through this whole process of like content creation. Um, if you need to do this on a smaller scale, just do this one month at a time. That will help you to kind of see uh, long-term kind of where you're going. Like you can look at your goals over maybe a 90 day time frame, but you're only doing like one month at a time. Get really good at that and then maybe add on two months and then maybe add on three months. As I showed you in ClickUp, I mean, yes, I'm planning for like 90 days at a time, but that is an ever evolving calendar and things may change. My channel may very well pick up a video and go viral and that's kind of where I need to like switch and move directions. It's not, you know, we plan content and this is it. Like we're not moving this at all. No, it's very much like we're planning this content and this is ever evolving. Things maybe get, get added in, things may be removed. So just know as you do this, it's not set in stone. Um, don't feel that pressure and absolutely like shift and change things as your business shifts and change changes. Um, if you really liked this video, I know this is different than other videos, but if you really liked this video, uh, make sure you, you know, leave me a comment down below and let me know what your biggest takeaway was. And if you screenshot this video and share it on Instagram, I will tag you and share you back. Uh, just kind of a way to say thank you. Um, so I'm over on Instagram as well. Um, just to wrap this video up, make sure you head on over and watch our Pinterest marketing playlist. You can see how you can take Pinterest now after you've got this content plan in place and you're creating the content, how you can actually take Pinterest and drive traffic to that piece of content or all of those pieces of content. So make sure you head on over and watch that playlist and I will see you next time.